Well, let's talk about uh, some silliness here in the torch. Uh, it's a recap of the silliness that was on impact where AJ Styles mistakenly marries Karen Jarrett. <laughs> of course, the idea is we're going to do a ceremony to renew the vows of Kurt and Karen Angle. And that's so often with these wrestling weddings, it doesn't go as planned. And it starts with a preacher and he's introducing the groom and his best man, AJ Styles. And of course, Don West is saying AJ's facial expressions look like someone stole his puppy. And next up, Karen's daughter, Kim, and the maid of honor, Jeremy Borash, come out. Borash is wearing a suit, not a dress. So I guess that's a good thing. Uh, and as Kurt and Karen are renewing their vows, he asks if anyone objects to speak now and forever hold their peace. And Styles is trying to convince Karen to say no. That doesn't happen. So out comes Samoa Joe with Kevin Nash. And Samoa Joe says, I object, but I couldn't sit back here and let you make the mistake of marrying that dime store gold digging skank. And so now I brought Kevin Nash out here so we can beat you up and strip you of your dignity. It's real. It's damn real. Shenanigans happen. Uh, what do you know? Accidentally, AJ gets married to Karen styles is leaning in for a kiss, has a huge smile. Kurt stands up. Can't believe what he's seeing. And the audience dropped. From a 1.1 to a 1.03, it was an average viewership of 1.5. Normally, these wrestling weddings are box office bonanzas. This one, for whatever reason, was not. It's a little silly, but all wrestling weddings are. What do you remember of the creative, the execution, and were you disappointed that the ratings actually came down? Did the rating just the quarter hour of the whole show? Well, it dropped during that, during that segment. Okay. Um, so when we started the show, it was, um, the opening was a 1.1 and then quarter hour. Number eight or Q eight is a 1.03. So it dropped not a huge amount, but still normally you see that they know there's going to be a swerve or something. So we'll tune in to see what it is. And right. that doesn't seem to have translated. So modern day AEW, this happens every week. It starts Q1 and Q2 are generally the highest quarter hours and it tapers off. And I know, look, we could get into the ratings conversation, but this is something that um, had a, I was going to respond to, to on the notes and just say, hey man, let's dig this up. I could probably find it somewhere. But at this time, Conrad, Spike had purchased the rights to CSI. CSI was our lead in and it was a massive number. And uh, sometimes they ran it three nights a week, five nights a week. I mean, it was, excuse me, the entire library, but the CSI leading dumped a huge audience. But as time went on, spike and Ant research and all that found out that, Hey, you know what? Uh, CSI fans are wrestling fans. So that first Q one, and it was a big audience, but in that, you know, they dumped a lot of their viewers and then our wrestling fans were, were tuning in. I don't say late, but you know, sometimes they get there at eight after 10 after 12 after you could just kind of see that number anyway. So I think a lot of times that Q one in any wrestling show is a little misleading as it gets into prime time, because what's your lead in, but that's why I was curious to see how all, how off Q two to Q eight was that, is something that I tried to, I don't say in the back of my mind, but kind of had that look, said, okay, you know, and, and so there's four quarter hours an hour, obviously. So the second quarter hour is kind of a, I don't call it a baseline, but that's kind of your tune in that doesn't have anybody that's watching the prior show it is really still there 15 minutes later. So where are we going to be from Q2, Q2 to Q8? So anyhow, um, enough of ratings, but you, you'll see that pattern a, a, a lot uh in 08 and even into because csi i think was all, all, all actually into 09 i'm not even sure if it's 010 but anyway so the wedding i thought the execution i thought it was super entertaining a little uh trivia footnote the preacher um that that hosted the ceremony uh a friend of the family uh tom sturdiment for the old school memphis wrestling fans if you remember brother ernest Brother Ernest was a takeoff on a t television evangelist. He could play it to the hill. 
loving guy. He sent me and has sent me multiple texts during this last couple of weeks and uh, just great, great guy, but he loved, I mean, he, he could get into his character. So he performed the ceremony. I thought he did a fantastic job. I thought AJ styles, when you look at, we'll call him for lack of a better word, kind of X division, AJ that hadn't quite developed his character or was on his way. I thought AJ is a heel run here. Uh, he just kind of continued to develop and get outside of his comfort zone and this whole boy next door, but kind of fell into the hot chick and Kurt was more worried about the world heavyweight title than his wife and family. And then Kira, uh, as a little girl, she, she, she got to be a part of it. I thought it was highly entertaining. I thought the outcome was something that you I don't think anybody called that going into, okay, out of this wedding storyline, this nonsense, we're going to get into Karen and AJ getting married and, but Kurt's, you know, not gonna, I thought Kurt played his role. Well, I thought Karen, I thought AJ, I thought the preacher, I just thought, look, it was executed how it was laid out. And I think everybody in it uh, did an excellent job.